Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Destiny changer, you are a destiny changer. Come and change your destiny, a destiny today. He that will frustrate your destiny has not been born, is not being born, and will never be born. You are going somewhere and you will certainly get there. Can I hear somebody a holla amen three times? Number one, number two, and number three. Welcome to Moment of Destiny. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Nathan D.D. Fika, President. Providence Delta Baptist Conference. We are happy to be with you. We are glad to be with you on this broadcast. And we believe that as you tune in, we believe that as you watch, we believe that as you listen, the word of the Lord will make a meaning in your life and will bring transformation unto you. So I welcome you on board and ask that the Lord bless you as you join us on this broadcast. Your life will never be the same again. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Our theme for the conference session is a new season of God's fulfillment. A new season of God's fulfillment. I'm just going to take it small this morning to talk about divine fulfillment. Can you say that with me? Divine fulfillment. Say it louder again. Divine fulfillment. Divine fulfillment. Divine fulfillment. That's what we'll be looking at. Father, breathe upon your word. Bless us, your children. Do for us what no man can do. Uphold us with your victorious right hand. Let no boy or girl, man or woman, to babies in the womb and destinies, not go back the same way they came. Thank you, blessed Savior. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Welcome, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Now, divine fulfillment. Divine fulfillment. Let me say, by way of introduction, that life is not fully lived until there is fulfillment. Are you following me? Please write that down. Life is not fully lived until there is fulfillment. And what is fulfillment? A sense of accomplishment, a sense of satisfaction, a sense of completeness, a sense of completion. Yes, like we saw in that Psalm, Psalm 138, verse 8. He said, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your noble Lord endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. One version says, Complete the work you have begun. So life is about a drive for completion. Until, the, and the King James, I was read, said, perfect, he uses the word perfect. So until there is a level of perfection in life, we have not really lived. So the drive in life, the drive in Christianity, the drive in family, the drive in business, the drive in body, soul, and spirit for every man should be to get to that place of fulfillment. As God gave me this word, I've been meditating upon it and pray, Lord, that my day of death will not come until my life is fulfilled, until my ministry is fulfilled, until my career is fulfilled, until my days are fulfilled. I didn't hear you say that somebody. Please, as you go from this service, if there's anything that should drive you in life, I want to find fulfillment in every area of life. That's why as young people, you don't just pick up a career. It's not everything you are meant to do. It's not anything you are meant to do. There's something under God that you are to live for as a profession, as a career. And when you are in that career, you have fulfillment. The fulfillment may not necessarily be the money. We need the money. The fulfillment may not be the official car. We need them. But that I am doing what God will help me do 
I am involved in what God wants me to be involved in. It gives you a sense of fulfillment. I didn't want to be a pastor, but I am fulfilled being a pastor. If there's any passion, there is anything that gives me satisfaction, it's ministering here and there, praying for people, counseling with people, teaching here, involved here and there, running to see that the work of God is moving forward. It's stressful, but I don't bother about the stress. I have satisfaction in my spirit. I am doing what God has ordained me to do. So the try in life, and even as a local congregation, can we drive the church to the place of fulfillment? Are we living up to the point we want to live? Are we bringing satisfaction to people the way we want to bring satisfaction? And more importantly, am I bringing satisfaction to God the way I need to bring him satisfaction? Is God satisfied? One thing right that says, uh, uh, I am satisfied with Jesus, but is the master satisfied with me? Is he satisfied with me? We must bring satisfaction to Jesus in what we live for, what we represent, what we pursue must bring satisfaction to God. He looks at me, he looks at you, and he says, Thank God. I thank God, I, I, God will be happy. I have my son there, he will represent me. I have my daughter there, she will represent me. I have my people there, they will represent me. I have my church there, First Baptist Church, where it will represent me. Then you are bringing fulfillment to God. And you will be happy with the church of God. You will be happy with that family. You will be happy with those individuals. So we must strive to find fulfillment for ourselves. And we must strive to bring fulfillment to God. May you find fulfillment in every area of life. May your life also bring fulfillment to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A few things, three, just three things I want to leave with you and I want you to write them down, please. Three things about divine fulfillment. Number one, divine fulfillment comes by the actualization of your purpose. Divine fulfillment comes by the actualization of your purpose. That scripture said, why can James use the word perfect? The NIV says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose. The Lord will fulfill his purpose. That's when the NIV puts it. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love is eternal. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The key word there is purpose and fulfill. So fulfillment is tied to actualization of purpose. It's tied to actualization of purpose. When you look at the other scripture in Acts chapter 13, verse 36, Acts 13, 36, it says, now when David accept God's purpose, one version says, David accept God's will. He served God's will. He served God's purpose. Another version says, in God's plan. David was running with God's plan. And he brought God's, that God's plan executed for his generation. God's purpose executed for his generation. That's another dimension. I spoke to you about finding fulfillment personally and bringing fulfillment to God. And of course, the third dimension is bringing fulfillment to others. I pray that everywhere you turn, everywhere you go, somebody will get satisfied because of you. Somebody will get fulfilled because of you. Even as I speak to you now, fulfillment is coming to you in the name of Jesus. Shout it louder, even so much. Listen to me. If you die without the purpose of God being actualized, you have not lived well. You have not lived to fullness. I was praying at the funeral, and I, my topic was before you die. And it was this passage from Acts chapter 13. Before you die, because if you look at that scripture, the Bible said that David had served God's purpose in his own generation, then he fell asleep. It's a tragedy to die before fulfilling God's purpose. None of you should die before your purpose is fulfilled. Before 
before he died. He served God's purpose before he died. And even after he died, because of his service and, and, and the purpose is brought, that purpose was still running after he died. You remember he had a purpose to build the temple. God said, no, leave that for your son. And it's okay, this house should not be. He gathered the things before, before his son. So, when Solomon built that magnificent auditorium, it was not Solomon, it was what his father put together before he left. The glory of Solomon was in the day in David who prepared the ground for him. The kingship of Solomon was in his father who prepared the ground for him. And when he was handing over to his son, remember the covenant of the Lord, my son. Don't go back from it because God has covenanted with me and my family that we will stand before him to represent him. Obey his commands, obey his rules so that this covenant will not fail. It was a covenant with David that was running. Let me say it again, you will never die until your purpose is fulfilled. I say it again, you will never die until your purpose is fulfilled. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Jesus said, my food in John 4 verse 34, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. What is food? What is food? That's what gives you satisfaction. That's what gives you nourishment. That's what gives you vitality. That's what gives you strength. Jesus said, it is when I live in the will of God. That's when I have food. Food is not ever. Food is not fish. Food is not burger. Food is when the purpose, when you are living according to purpose, not being fed. Any man outside purpose is not having food. Any man outside the will of God is not having the real food. It is the will of God that should be the food of every man. That's why you don't come to church and push your will or push somebody's will. In church, we should ask, what is the will of God in this matter? That's where church will have food. That's where church will have satisfaction. God will not sponsor what is not his will. You didn't hear what I said. God will not sponsor what is not what? His will. God will not sponsor what is not His will. God will not back what is not His will. That's scripture. David died after he has served God's purpose. And notice that the Bible said after he fell asleep, he joined his ancestors. The Bible did not say he joined his children or even his brothers or sisters. Please. May you not join your children. Amen. Somebody said this. Please, if you can follow, because of time I'm rushing. If you can, pick the tape later. I want to read a few things about purpose to you. One Robert Bennett said, The purpose of life is a life with purpose. The purpose of life is a life with purpose. Someone has said, A life without purpose is worthless. A purpose without people is vain. A people without God are doomed. A life which connects a people to God is of utmost purpose. You are conversant with our devotional sick daily and daily encounter. We use both in our family because they comment us and, and they complement each other. So we use both. We read the scripture. We read the commentary for sick daily. We read the commentary from daily encounter. That's what we do in our family. If you look at that, the sixth daily devotion for Wednesday, 20th March 2019, there is this statement. It said, Discovering purpose is crucial to meaningful living. Discovering purpose is crucial to meaningful living. Without a sense of purpose, we will just be occupying space without actually living. Miles Moreau said, the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but a life without purpose. He also said that where purpose is not determined, abuse is inevitable. Divine fulfillment comes when the purpose of God for our lives is actualized. As I speak to you, may the purpose of God for our lives be actualized. Yes. Number two, divine fulfillment comes by the actualization of your potential. Divine fulfillment comes by the actualization of your potential. So when the call of God came, three options, theology, education, and music, I quickly chose music. It was in my graduating year, I had the 
platform like this in the chapel in the seminary at the Bumajo. And on the day of praise and prayer, there was not much preaching required just to lead prayers and praises. And they will usually give that to music students. But I decided to give a little devotional. And I titled it, Reasons for God's Praise, Psalm 138, verse 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I said, we're going to praise God. But I just want to drop these two things with you. Reasons for God's praise, number one, let's praise God because we are fearfully made. Number two, let's praise God because we are wonderfully made. Just that little exhortation. People were shocked, hey, music to them preaching like this, music to them preaching like this. My lecturers after the chapel of my colleagues, are you sure it's music? They can your message you preach. I didn't know myself that such potential was there. But that day the thing came out and everybody was out. Don't you think it's theology you should have read? I said, but I'm already graduated. Let me go to the field. I came to worry as music minister. For six years, I was in the minister about to talk music minister. For your own information, people were inviting me for revival that they were inviting me for music days. I said, what is happening to me? This continued. I said, I need to address this. I went back to the seminary to do a degree in theology. And before I knew it, there's a shift towards where my greater strength was. And later I discovered another one again, administration leadership. I said, what's happening to me? And before I knew leadership responsibilities were coming here and there, and they compared, I managed the department for worry, the music department for worry, the, 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 I was in worry here managing it, and it was running well. I just wondered. There's a leadership gift to what did I do? I attended John Maxwell leadership program for three consecutive years, twice a year. Twice in a year. And God satisfied for leadership. As I'm speaking to you, I'm, I'm on a program in the US. I'm doing a doctor of leadership in organizational leadership. So what am I trying to say? Discovery of potential. I discovered music, discovered preaching, discovered leadership. And I'm running as I'm discovering them. Running along with them, developing them. And I tell you that in every human being, there is more than one potential, more than one gift. Everyone has a major gift and then a complementary one, a subsidiary one. In most cases, there are even more than two. We are gifted in different ways. Let me give you this thing you are talking about as an example. The boy was, the man was a fine examiner. The man was administrator. The man was leader. He was, the man was a writer. The man played on the, on the harp. He was a musician. No man gifted. The man was in warfare. He was gifted. He killed the bear. He killed the lion. One man, he killed the lion. Those were all potentials in a man. One man loaded. And every one of you here seated and loaded. And your fulfillment is tied to what God has loaded in you. The potential in you must be maximized, must be actualized to find fulfillment. When your potential is finding expression, as I'm speaking to you, I feel fulfilled because my potential is speaking. I don't struggle to preach. It is there. I just prepare and make sure that I arrange myself well, but to go and speak about it is not an issue. I sit down, I prepare, I try to harmonize, I try to arrange my, my thoughts very well. But to deliver it is there. Even if I don't have the script, I will do it. It is what God has deposited in you. You need to take all off. And then fulfillment comes with it. See, the deposit of God in you was not there for form. God deposited in you so that it can find expression. And in indeed getting express, expression, you find fulfillment and other people find fulfillment. I find fulfillment preaching and people find fulfillment hearing me preach. That's how fulfillment comes. Your divine fulfillment is tied to your potential. It's tied to your potential. What is potential? Potential is some top power. What is potential? It is inactive power, unused power, underutilized power, stagnant ability, dormant ability, that's potential. Potential is that which is existing with possibility, but not in actuality. Potential is anything that may be possible, an inherent capability, that's potential. Not actually exhibited, but it is there. Potential is an aptitude that may be developed, what you are expected to become, that you have not become. Potential is a prospect with possibility.
possibility of becoming actual. In fact, the word potential is traceable to God Himself. You know what of God said, omnipotent. Come on, everybody say omnipotent. If you break that word, it's omnipotent and then potent. What that word omnipotent means is that God is the God of all potentialities. In Him are men are potentials. Remember in Genesis, the Bible said that man was made in the image of God. So we are carriers of the abilities of God. No creature, no plant was given the ability of God. Only man was given that ability. We are carriers of God. The ability of God is in us. The power of God is in us. We are God's representatives. Nothing else in this world is like God than man. Is carrying God like man. So, and when that potential does not get expressed, God Himself is gets disappointed that He deposited something in you and it is not coming forth. Whatever God deposited in you is provoked today to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Man, as the image of God, has inherent God deposits. God has placed in man his abilities as he did to other creatures. So we carry in him, carry of him, of his powers. That's the potential. But what must we do to potential for it to be expressed? For it to be to find fulfillment thereof. Number one, discover your potential. What did I say? Discover. Know it. Know the potential. Identify it. Number two, develop it. Develop is grow the potential. Sharpen the potential. Mature it. Expand it. Let it advance. Let it increase. Let it enlarge. Improve it. Let it come out. That's development. Number three, deploy the potential. Deploy is put into use. Utilize it. Number four, be disciplined about the potential. That you have potential does not mean it will be actualized if you lack discipline. And if it was being actualized and if you become indisciplined, you can lose it. A good example is Samson. Samson was powerful. But the more he was messing up, the more he messed up the power. And every day you mess up, you mess up your deposit, the deposit of God in you. Some say, some say, with all the power, with all the potentials. But if we mess around, and then the power goes. So we must be mindful to be disciplined. I said, before the conference session will begin, I will be on a fast for 50 days. So before we began, I was fasting for 50 days. And since we began, I have not still eaten, and I'm not likely to eat until the service is over today. So that will be 54 days somebody is fasting. It takes discipline to do that. Welcome back. This is still Moment of Destiny. I'm sure that we have blessed you. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, can I encourage you to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you are not saved, you are not safe. If you don't have Christ, you are in crisis. A life without Christ is a life in crisis. I want to encourage you to turn over your life to Jesus, to accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. Have you done that before? Then you need to rededicate your life to Him. To consecrate yourself to him. Maybe you backslidden after you gave your life to Christ. Please come back to him. His arms are still open to receive you. And you will have newness of life. A new work with him. As you will dedicate your life to him. I don't know what challenge you have. But by this ministration and prayer. Your challenges are also taken care of. The miracle working God. Will grant you your miracles. Your life will never be the same again. Can I encourage you to join us. In any of our Baptist churches. Wherever you are. Anywhere in the world. And particularly in Delta State. In the Providence Delta Baptist Conference. Get there that you listen to us. You watch to us and the message blessed you introduce yourself to the pastor any official of the church you will be warmly welcomed and embraced with the hands of the lord it is well with you as i leave you don't you ever forget this either will frustrate your destiny has not been born it's not been born and will never be born you are going somewhere and you will certainly get there in jesus christ's mighty name amen